PLA, ABS, PETG, TPU. Are all of these filament acronyms giving you the runaround? In today's video, we'll break down some of the basic benefits of each so you can feel confident in picking the right filament for your next 3D printing project. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, Andy here back at the Maker Lab at Micro Center. We're always working to bring in the right assortment of filament based on what we're seeing people in the 3D printing community using. Whether it's a more resilient PLA or a quicker color changing rainbow filament, we do our best to listen and provide what you, our customers, want. With that being said, today we're going to look at the four most common filament family types and give some basic recommendations for each. Before we get started, it's worth noting that not all printers take the same diameter of filament. However, the most common diameter is 1.75 millimeters and more uncommonly 2.85 millimeter, sometime referred to as three millimeters. Without further ado, let's get started. The first filament type we're looking at today is PLA, which stands for polylactic acid. This is probably one of the easiest filaments to get started with due to its lower melting point and more forgiving nature. Traditionally, 3D printer manufacturers will include a sample of this in the box when you receive your printer. PLA also tends to be the most affordable of filaments. This can change, however, depending on the make of the PLA. Micro Center's house brand, Inland, offers traditional PLA, PLA Plus, and Tough PLA currently. In a future video, we may go into the differences between the three, but for today's video, we'll be featuring PLA. Always make sure to check your spool or filament box for recommended temperature settings. For PLA, I like to print around 215 degrees Celsius for the nozzle and 55 degrees Celsius for the bed. PLA often gets overlooked and thought of as a beginner's filament. However, the PLA family of filaments can produce useful prints that can be used on a daily basis such as this cool planner. One of the other benefits of PLA is that you usually are able to find the largest assortment of colors in this family. Our second filament family is ABS, which in the world of plastics stands for acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. Try saying that 10 times fast. ABS is the same plastic toys like Lego bricks are made out of and many other common plastic parts you use every day. The major benefits of ABS is still a wider variety of colors, higher tensile strength and stiffness. Overall, this tends to produce a more durable part. Because ABS has a higher melting point, it is also more heat resistant than the PLA family. This comes at a cost though. Printing at these higher temperatures might not be in the cards for every entry level printer. Nowadays, most all consumer printers come with a heated bed, so it's not as much an issue. However, it's good to consider looking for an enclosed printer or purchasing an enclosure for your printer if you are going to print in ABS. The featured print here was done at 245 degrees Celsius for the hot end and 95 degrees for the bed. We did experience some very minor warping on the bed, which could be helped by increasing the temperature or potentially using some adhesives such as Magigoo. Ultimately, this carabiner came out great and functions as expected. The third filament on our list is PETG. This filament became extremely popular recently in the 3D printing world with the printing of parts for face masks during the height of the COVID outbreak. It offers ease of printing like PLA, but with additional strength like ABS. PETG stands for polyethylene tetraphylate glycol. It has less tendency to warp like ABS and also almost no odors or fumes. For the print temperature here, we ran it at 235 degrees Celsius for the nozzle and 75 degrees Celsius for the bed. The print we chose to feature here is a clip-on cup holder. Again, the benefit of PETG being its higher durability and strength compared to that of PLA, as well as its ability to withstand higher external temperatures before deforming. Due to its impressive properties, if everything is set correctly, bed adhesion and warping shouldn't be an issue. Our last filament to look at today is thermoplastic polyurethane, or better known as TPU. This member of the TPE family has properties that make it flexible, making it great for things like watch straps, phone cases, and other items that need to bend or stretch without breaking. Because of its properties, however, it can be a little trickier to dial in on your 3D printer. TPU is also prone to absorbing excess moisture and should be kept in a sealed bag with desiccant when not in use. It is possible to dry out filaments when they absorb moisture, but that's a topic for another day. 
For TPU, it is also good to consider printing with a direct drive extruder versus Bowden tube style, as the flexibility of the filament can potentially become jammed in the distance between the extruder motor and the hot end on Bowden style printers. For TPU, we chose to show off its flexibility by printing these small cable ties. The interesting thing about this print is that there's actually a customizer on Thingiverse.com allowing you to modify the size and number of holes to fit your needs. We ran these at 220 degrees Celsius for the hot end and 42 degrees for the heated bed. If you're interested in any of the files we use today, check out the links in the description below. We carry a wider variety of filaments than was shown here in the video. So if you're curious, you can always check out microcenter.com or stop into your local microcenter and speak with one of our knowledgeable associates. All right, now get out there and make some cool stuff. As always, like, subscribe, and comment below with any filament advice you have for the folks in the 3D printer community. Follow Micro Center on social media and visit us over at community.microcenter.com to show off your 3D prints and projects. We'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.